and welcome to the Qubit Guide podcast, brought to you by Classic, the quantum algorithm design company. My name is Yuval, and my guest today is Florian Neukart, Chief Product Officer at Terra Quantum AG. Florian and I talk about their hybrid quantum classical cloud and how it is different than quantum offerings of traditional cloud vendors, about his departure from Volkswagen, and much more. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please let us know how we did by emailing hello at classic.io. That's hello at classic.io. Hello, Florian, and thanks for joining me today. Hi, Yuval. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thanks for having me. So who are you and what do you do? My name is Florian Neukert, and I'm the Chief Product Officer at Terra Quantum and an Assistant Professor for Quantum Computing at the University of Leiden. Terra Quantum is a quantum as a service and a quantum technology company which means we're active in all pillars of quantum technology. But the customer-facing ones right now are algorithms as a service, compute as a service, and safety as a service. For all of these three, we have products that are commercially available today already and in the market, and they are used by customers. We continuously, of course, improve and extend these products, and the team and I work in concert with research to develop new products. That means for the more fundamental work that happens in research, for all of the things that we prototypically develop, we need to figure out how to commercialize these technologies, how to commercialize research results. Very often when you look at research, and this is not specific to our company, then some results are fundamental, but a little further away from commercialization right now. Some have near-term potential and some are immediately applicable to solve practical problems. And taking early results and prototypes and building products around them that scale, that are usable, that are secure, um, all the product strategy, marketing, business development, customer engagement, consulting, and some more things um, are the things that the organization I'm responsible for is doing. And besides, as I mentioned uh, before, I have been teaching quantum computing at uh, Leiden University's Leiden Institute of Advanced Computer Science for many years now. And I enjoy sort of a comet-like existence at the university. It means I go there at least once a year to teach. Um, all the other work can be done remotely. But when I go there for teaching, the students uh, have the pleasure to listen to me for a couple of hours per day for one week or more. Um, that's me in a nutshell. Excellent. And before Terra Quantum, you were you had a, an important role in Volkswagen, and you and your team did some amazing things with Quantum. So why did you go from Volkswagen, such a big company, to Terra Quantum? Yeah, that is a... That is a, a very interesting question. So there are a couple of things. So Volkswagen um, is, is a very innovative company when it comes to software development. And in my last role, I've been responsible for the Data Lab, which is sort of an innovation hub with about 100 uh, people strong, uh, focusing on, on any software innovation um, within the Volkswagen group. That can be algorithms for environment perception and self-driving vehicles. That can be any algorithm for predicting market behavior. But it also includes uh, quantum computing because that's part of, of uh, many of these things that we look into today. And either it is already part of it today or will be sometime in the future. Uh, still, quantum technologies is not um, uh, the core of what Volkswagen does. So Volkswagen, um, as I said, they're very innovative and, and help push the field um, but in the end, they are, like many other industry companies, are consumers. And um, I've always had this strong passion for, for uh, uh, quantum physics. So, and I, I could live uh, this passion in academia, of course, but I'm also very, very interested in finding ways to, to commercialize uh, the latest research and, and make products out of that that people are interested that they're using. And Terra Quantum is exactly um, the place where this happens. So we have exciting research going on. And uh, right now, as you know, um, uh, we are amidst this uh, sort of revolution. So for all of the pillars of quantum technology, we see applications emerging. We see uh, new fields opening up in quantum computing. We see new applications coming up or ideas for new applications every day. And uh, being at the core of that and being able to, uh, to work on things um, on, on technology that people will use that will help um, solve complex industry problems, will help improve the society. So this is uh, what I can do at Terra Quantum, and therefore um, I made this move. So it's a, it's a different uh, scale of a company. So Terra Quantum is a scale-up right now with 
uh, about 140 people, whereas Volkswagen is a company with almost 700,000 people. <laughs> so it's a different life, but it's a very, very exciting life. So you want to say that at Volkswagen, you didn't know everyone by name <laughs> <laughs> and at Terra Quantum you do. That's good. Um, you mentioned that uh, Terra Quantum does uh, uh, algorithms as a service, computers as a service, security as a service. Uh, let's start with the uh, compute part. And if we have time, we can go to, to other areas. Um, I saw that you have an offering called the QMware, which appears to me at least from the outside, this is sort of a hybrid quantum uh, classical cloud. Um, could you explain what it is and how is it different than sort of traditional cloud vendors that are adding quantum capabilities to their cloud? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. So um, I need to talk about the whole stack here. So what Terra Quantum does is um, focus on, in terms of uh, software for quantum computers, uh, focus on the development, as you said, of hybrid algorithms. And hybrid algorithms, um, so that can mean many things. So you can look at algorithms, for example, um, that have sort of a sequential processing where you have a classical part, say you have some prediction, say you predict traffic, and then you have uh, some part that is solved quantumly, like the optimization in that case, how to distribute vehicles optimally. You can solve that with uh, a quantum chip. And then the other perspective that you could have is um, look at algorithms that are intermeshed. So where you have classical and quantum parts strongly interwoven. For example, a neural network. When you say you have a classical input, you have a classical layer, and then you have a quantum circuit as the next layer, and then again a classical layer. And you use the output, um, so the, the error that you have to optimize the quantum, the parameters for the quantum circuit again. And uh, so the latter ones, um, not only in terms of neural networks, but in all of the uh, aspects that we look into, be it optimization, be it simulation, be it machine learning, um, the latter ones are those that we are specifically interested in. And we found that um, not only uh, by, by splitting parts into classical and quantum, uh, we can obtain an advantage. Uh, we found that if we develop a specific hardware architecture, um, a specific integration with quantum chips then these algorithms run even more efficiently. And uh, this is the QMware cloud that we have. And now I would just start with what the QMware cloud is from the bottom, from the hardware level. So from the hardware level, it means um, we have classical high performance computing resources, as we know, which is CPUs, some GPUs, data processing units, etc. cetera. Um, then we have our, our quantum chips um, next to them, but not next to them in the sense of coexisting like many other cloud vendors do. So where you have maybe a QPU in some data center somewhere and the classical hardware in another data center and you access the QPU via a web service. No, for us, it's different. So we have an integration on a hardware level with a dedicated hardware interface that we develop for each of the QPUs. So that means we have integration on a hardware level and then what we build on top is an operating system. The operating system is called Cognite. And this operating system, um, <clears throat> it does many things. So for one, it uh, virtualizes the hardware. So it uh, virtualizes both classical and the quantum chips. So and that means what you can do then with this virtualization is access a shared memory infrastructure. So we can share uh, classical memory throughout all these resources. Of course, when uh, the program or the, the problem is executed or solved, then you push it down to the hardware level. But uh, the hardware level means really these uh, uh, both classical and quantum resources being next to each other, not, not spread all over the, the places. So and then on top of this operating system, we have our libraries. So these hybrid algorithms that I mentioned at the beginning, and now this combination of all of these things this, um, this really makes it very efficient and easy to program for uh, quantum computers or, or quantum assisted software. So in the end, it's very much like programming business software today. Uh, if I use my computer that I have in front of me, I do not need to worry too much um, about how to address the memory, how to address segments on the classical chip that I have in there, because the operating system and my programming language plus my libraries, that they solve this problem for me. And that's how we see it for quantum computing. And what that means for an end user is <clears throat> that if they don't want to, they don't need to worry about how to address the quantum or classical resources. They don't need to worry about error behavior. They don't need to worry about topology of the chips. 
because we do that for them. And um, another beauty of that whole thing is that um, uh, right now, so we have uh, both uh, physical QPUs um, that we can access or that we access plus simulators. So what that means is if you write software today um, using uh, this infrastructure, then even as the quantum hardware matures, even if we plug in new chips, even if we parallelize quantum chips, which is also something we do, uh, which is very useful for certain kinds of algorithms, but people only start thinking about parallelization of quantum chips. So you don't need to touch the code again. So which is also uh, very much different to many other um, uh, vendors that we see out there. So you have to uh, sometimes with new hardware, take care about new error behavior. We have to take care of that, of course, as integrators. So we, we need to solve that for the customers, but uh, the end user doesn't have to. So that was a very long monologue, I hope that helped a little to, to explain um, uh, what it is. Absolutely, this was great. So um, one of the things I, I uh, think I heard was almost co-locating the quantum processor with the classical processor. Does that mean that you have uh, quantum computers that you own on-premise in your data center? So it's, uh, it's different. We have, um, so we have a data center on our own. Um, we have our own hardware development going on in terms of quantum chips, but you don't see this in the cloud yet. What we do uh, for now, so our hardware will come maybe say in two years, um, two and a half years. But what we do is integrate with any vendor out there. So we have a couple of um, 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 advanced conversations with, with vendors out there that we plan to integrate over the next months. So, and we'll see um, uh, the most, so from our perspective, some of the most important ones in our cloud very soon. And you're right, uh, that means, um, so we bring our classical hardware to wherever the quantum uh, computer resides. But in the end, um, what we also have is a partnership with NTT, uh, the data center um, uh, provider. So, and at some point we will move the quantum chips into uh, that data center. So, and they're prepared and ready uh, for, uh, for being able to, to operate and handle uh, all the complexities here. And in terms of software development, uh, to run on your infrastructure, do you have to develop the software for me? If I'm an enterprise, I have an um, optimization problem. Is that software that you need to develop for me? Or can I bring software that I already developed for option pricing or chemical simulations and what have you and just try to run it better on your infrastructure? Yes, so both is possible. Um, so you can run uh, your software on our infrastructure, but ideally uh, we can take uh, one part of your uh, software that you have, uh, or you take the part of the software that you have where you run a complex optimization algorithm and plug in one of our optimization algorithms. So both is possible. So it will benefit already from, from running on our, uh, on our uh, platform, but ideally uh, you go end to end with uh, the libraries that we provide. So it's always an API first approach it's easy to plug it in um, and um, and uh, just see uh, what happens, yeah? And um, there's always this debate about abstraction versus vendor specific. So if I'm, for instance, if I wanted to use an IonQ quantum computer, I could go directly to IonQ and use their API, or I could go through one of the cloud providers that host them and, and then use a, a more generic API. Do you feel that um, a customer would be losing some performance or functionality when they work through the generic API as opposed to the vendor specific API? Uh, no, uh, I don't think so. so. I would even say they would gain uh, because of uh, the integration with the classical high performance computing. So <clears throat> if we look at, at what it means with today's quantum chips, so we, we all know that uh, if you process a problem purely quantumly on a gate model chip, you most likely will not find something that is industrially relevant, be that in terms of simulation, be that in terms of optimization. Uh, it will take us some time. It will take us some time to improve the errors. It will take us some time to make uh, uh, chips that come with more high-quality qubits. So, but if you integrate it with, uh, with QEmbar, um, then what we do, what we always do with our customers is compare to best in business today because we can. So since we have a significant part um, of classical high-performance compute that executes uh, whatever code you submit. So if a customer uh, now says we have some option pricing running, we have some collateral optimization running, 
what they want to see is um, uh, a better solution to what they have now. And uh, we can show that even with uh, the, the scale of the chips, the quantum chips that we have today, uh, we can, uh, for one, run these problems in full complexity um, because of how we do it. And secondly, uh, outperform existing algorithms. So I don't say we outperform everything that's out there, but for many cases where we give it a try, we outperform existing algorithms just by uh, using punctually um, uh, the, the quantum chip and uh, doing everything else classically or using our simulator, so which is um, in, in some instances also more useful, especially when you want to avoid any error. Earlier in the conversation, you mentioned the algorithm as a service is something that uh, TerraQuantum provides. I assume that means that uh, I, as a customer, could go to you and you can develop an algorithm to solve a particular business problem. Is that what you mean? Yes, that's one thing. But in the end, uh, we mean also our libraries. So we developed um, um, uh, many different um, uh, algorithms uh, are clustered into um, simulation optimization machine learning, so the things that everyone is looking into, that are optimized to run on our infrastructure. So these we provide uh, ready to use for customers, and we have an, an, an API that you can use uh, for that that integrates with our libraries, um, but it is not a requirement. So in the end, uh, you can also develop your own libraries, or we develop uh, software for you from scratch if there is something missing in our libraries. So of course, we can help with that. They're very flexible in terms of how we work with customers. Some companies, such as Volkswagen, they have an advanced quantum uh, computing team, so they do not rely too much on us to develop their uh, software solutions uh, or would not rely uh, too much on us uh, to, to develop software solutions. But then there are others that just start and um, they, they may need more support here and then we can, of course, develop whatever is needed. If I take an analogy from the classical world um, on, on the cloud, uh, I could use a Google Cloud, for instance, for storage, but I could also use a Google API to, for instance, get uh, driving directions from uh, one point to another. Do you envision a situation, or maybe it exists today, that I have an API call for a Quantum Terra service for, say, a, a TSP problem? Here are the stops that I want to make and uh, tell me which one is the best um, the best sequence just uh, through an API? Yes. So it, it's very interesting that you bring this point up because there is something uh, that is on our roadmap and will be uh, released uh, within the next couple of months that goes into that direction. So in short, my answer would be yes, I can see that. Um, but I, I, I won't talk more about what we are developing right now since we haven't talked about it publicly. Could you give a few examples of customers that are using your um, QMware offering today? Yes. So um, I cannot mention names since we, we haven't published anything in concert with customers, uh, but I can give you the industry. So we work with um, automotive industry. Uh, we work with uh, financial institutions. They are very interested in both algorithms that we provide and the hardware. Uh, plus uh, cryptography solutions. So then pharmaceutical companies is also something that we have. Um, and then uh, aerospace is also very, very interesting. So this is just a, a brief overview of the, of, the, of the industries. So in the end, we have um, uh, some more, some less customers in all uh, the verticals. But I think these are, these are the strongest one right now. Most of the classical cloud providers are... Uh, headquartered at least in the US. Yes. Um, and uh, Terra Quantum is, uh, I believe, in Switzerland, right? Um, does it matter to you? Does it matter to your customers that this is a European company as opposed to a US company? No, so not too much. So in the end, um, uh, it can be an advantage sometimes because of the, so in Europe, we have this strict data privacy laws. Um, so and no matter who the customer is, it, because we our data centers are in Europe uh, for now, so we will have data centers here in the US uh, uh, soon as well. But uh, for now, they're in Europe, so we apply all these requirements, GDPR compliant, um, in, in, in our data centers. So um, this is something seen as an advantage, sometimes seen as an advantage, but in the end, uh, it's, it's never been a challenge for someone to work with us. And um, I feel 
Uh, so always compared to uh, the United States. So I know a lot um, is happening and also in China, a lot is happening in terms of quantum technology in these markets. But then in Europe, you also have so many uh, great people and good work going on. So I think we will see more and more uh, quantum technology, quantum computing companies emerging uh, over the next years, also software companies in Europe. So I think it will at some point even out in my point of view. So we'll see if that is true. You guys develop a lot of things yourself, but obviously there are aspects of the quantum computing stack that you don't develop. So if I were to make you um, hypothetically master of the universe, or at least master of the quantum universe for the next 18 months, what would you have your people <laughs> uh, work on to make your life better in quantum? So um, I think we're on a good track with, with uh, hardware development as well. But um, so for the next uh, 18 months, uh, if it's possible, if I was master of the universe, um, then of course I would wish for um, a fault tolerant uh, quantum computer with a significant number of qubits so that we can tackle all the industrial element problems that we see today already. In terms of sensing, the same here. So with quantum sensors, um, very often we're in a prototypical stadium. So we're, uh, we have, so for example, if you look at radar systems, quantum radar systems, we have these big boxes um, that are very still sensitive to, to environmental influences, to percussions. So if we could somehow uh, uh, solve all the technical challenges at once, then um, uh, we had finally uh, uh, would have them mobile. We would have them probably in vehicles, in airplanes. Um, yeah, so these are the things. Um, so it goes into all the pillars of quantum technology. I, I wish, of course, because I, I want to see this, this uh, research come to fruition in terms of products. I would wish everything would go a little faster, but you know how it is. It's, it's fundamental work that needs to be done. And then once that is done, engineering still has to solve many, many problems. Absolutely. And when you s see the pillars of quantum um, communication, sensing and computing, sometimes it feels like three different silos. The computing folks all, only know other computing folks. The sensing guys and gals only know other sensing people. Do you see that merging in Terra Quantum or elsewhere that communication, computing and sensing are coming together for some customer applications? Yes. So um, we see it coming together in the development that we do because um, many times it happens that you develop uh, something for one pillar that can be reused in another pillar. Um, that's one way to bring it together. But in terms of uh, uh, bringing it together in on a customer end, I see that too, yeah? Because so once people start being interested in securing their communications networks, um, then they also want to understand the threat. And once we talk about the threat, you need to talk about the technology and what it can do. And then people uh, tend to be interested in that as well. So I think um, it's really it's really interesting. It would be also interesting to hear your thoughts. Um, so everything seems to happen uh, 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 within the next years or happen over the last couple of years. So we seem to be in that sweet spot right now where, where all these quantum technologies um, mature such that we will have products, usable products, um, uh, rather sooner than later. Absolutely. Um, Florian, how can people get in touch with you to learn more about your work? Um, a good way to do that is via LinkedIn. Um, so I always check my LinkedIn messages and, of course, my, my email address, um, which is a rather lengthy one. Um, but um, I can provide that so and we can, of course, um, add that to, to the podcast. I shall do that. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you very much for having me. It was very nice. Thanks for the questions and your interest. <laughs>